Hi hey guys, uh, this is another video on FRQ type 1 of AP Precalc. I was getting some requests on my channel to um, make the same and hence this video. You will not really find this question anywhere else because I made this question. So this is, uh, uh, this is the complete question for you to capture if you want to try it offline. And now I'll just move to questions one by one and start solving it. All right, uh, by the way, keep your TI-84 handy because we're going to use it aggressively here. Okay. Uh, given the function, so there's a table given, by the way, x of x and fx, uh, some values of x, some values of fx. And then there's another function, gx, which is, well, not so pleasant. Oh, my goodness, it has a natural log as well. So we have to define hx as a composite function of g and f, so is g of f of x, and this is how we write it. We have to compute h of 3 as an exact value or a state if it's undefined. Okay. Excellent. Uh, we will give them an exact value and we'll give them an approximation as well. So first off, let's let's see how do we write these things, right? Uh, I'm talking about A1 right now. So H of X is equal to G of F of X, G of F of X. And since I need to find the value of H of 3, I'm just going to replace the X with 3, correct? That's what I do. For f of 3, I will take the help of the table and f of 3 is the functional value of fx at x equal to 3. Where is x equal to 3, guys? This is over here. So the value is 42. So I'm interested to know the value of g of 42, which is now pretty straightforward because all you have to do is plug in 42 over here. If they need the exact value, obviously, you're just going to sub in 42 in every x. So it's sine of 42 plus square root of 42 plus 4 over e raised to 42 plus 2 times natural log of 42 square plus 1. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, but I think I'm, I'm going to give you a decimal approximation as well using the calculator. So you can plug this into your TI-84, but make sure that your calculator is in radian mode. Otherwise, that's going to give you a wrong answer. So if I plug this into my online calculator, I'm going to get negative 0 0.707. So this is the decimal approximation, and this is the exact version. Obviously, you can write 42 plus 4 as 46, and 42 squared, whatever that is, add it to 1. If you want, I can do that for you. Uh, let me make some space over here. If you are not really interested in seeing that expression, you can move forward uh, uh, in this video. Okay, all right. So this is going to look like, um, okay, it's, uh, it's very difficult to make some space here. So I'm just going to write over here. This is going to look like sine of 42 plus square root of 46 over e raised to 42 plus 2. And what is 42 square? 42 square is 1764 and 1764 plus 1 is 1765, uh, which is approximately negative 0 0.707. All right, okay, that's part 1A1. Uh, let's move ahead and uh, now we are on to part 2. Uh, determine the exact value of f inverse 8 or state that uh, it is undefined. But it's not undefined, right? What is f inverse 8? It's a, kind of like a reverse engineering. So inverse means whatever is inside is the function's value or the y-coordinate, right? And what is the y-coordinate? That is just a function. And what is the function? These are the functional values. Do we see 8? we do see an 8. So what is the corresponding value of x? That's 2, right? So that is our answer, that f inverse 8 is actually 2. All right, excellent. Let's move ahead. Now we are talking about b1. All right, find all the real values of x such that gx is root 2 over 2 or state that there are no such values. So this is where you're going to plug that entire thing into TI-84. I'll tell you what to plug in. Uh, we are solving for B1, right? So we are solving when gx is root 2 over 2, uh, which means that sine of x plus square root of x plus 4 
over e raised to x plus 2 times ln of x squared plus 1 is equal to square root 2 over 2. Now what I want you to do is bring this guy over on the left side. Uh, so it looks like I'm not going to make the effort of writing this again. I'm just going to copy and paste and move this thing over on the left. So it's negative root 2 over 2 is equal to 0. At this point, um, fellas, I want you to plug this entire thing without equal to 0. Plug this entire thing into your TI-84. I hope your calculator is still in uh, a radian mode. Uh, by the way, it can it's, it's not mandatory TI-84. It can be any other graphical calculator which is capable of basically graphing this curve as well. And um, if you do that, uh, keep your window as minus 5 to 5 if you are still not seeing any points of intersection because we are interested in locating the x-intercepts of this uh, particular equation, right? Because x-intercepts are the points where it is equal to 0. So if you notice carefully in that, uh, and uh, uh, once again, if you are not seeing any intersections, please zoom out your window, uh, uh, probably keep it as minus 5 to 5 as the window of x. Uh, and if you do that, you will see an intersection at negative, negative 2.669. That is the x-intercept of this particular boxed equation. I hope this makes sense. If you are unable to graph it on TID4, just leave a comment. Uh, perhaps I will make a separate video on that. All right, excellent. Let's try B2. Uh, really have any space for B2? So uh, let me add another page here. All right, for B2, now this is interesting. Why? Because they are asking that what is the behavior of GX as X approaches positive infinity and express your findings using the limit rotation. Now, guys, here, I mean, I'm not saying that you cannot put infinity limit X approaching infinity. I'll just write what I'm trying to explain. Uh, we are looking for the value as limit X approaches infinity of GX which is nothing but limit x approaches infinity of sine of x plus square root of x plus 4 over e raised to x plus 2 ln of x square plus 1. Now what I'm trying to say is if you're going to put infinity here, this will become infinity. Ln of infinity is infinity. E raised to infinity plus 2 is also infinity. And sine of infinity is like between negative 1 to 1. Don't worry about this because this entire thing can still be solved using the concepts of limits using calculus. But that is a part of, you know, calculus AB or BC. But since this video is intended for AP pre-cal aspirants, so we need to find a way that how can we still find it? So what you can do is, uh, think about that x is going to a really big number, right? Really large number. So rather than plug in infin infinity, why don't you take this entire expression and replace x as in find this find the value of this thing at x equal to perhaps 999 or maybe 1000, you know? Take a really big number. First find at 1000, you will realize that even if you increase this to 10,000, your answer is not going to change. At, at least till three decimals, three or four. In fact, till five decimals, six decimals, I'm seeing it's not changing. And if you do that, if you uh, if you find the value of sine of 1000, remember calculator is in radian mode. So it's 1000 plus four law, sorry. This is where this ends over e raised to 1000 plus 2 ln of 1000 square plus 1. You're going to get approximately, till three decimal places, you're going to get negative 0 0.707. And that is going to be our answer. Right, so this is how we can solve it. They want us to express the answer using the limit notation. I think we already done it, but I can still officially write that uh, the final answer is limit x approaching infinity of gx is uh, approximately negative uh, 0.707. That is the final answer. All right, makes sense, right? Uh, let's move on to the, uh, I think the last part. 
uh, C1 and C2. So here they are now talking about FX. They are saying that utilize the provided table of FX to determine the most suitable uh, function type to model F. Select so polynomial trig, exponents, and logs. Okay, all right. Mm. I think uh, for polynomials, guys, if you remember, uh, surely it's not a linear function, right? Because linear function has like, uh, if you notice the values of x, uh, they are incrementing, it's incrementing with one, what, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. And in linear fashion, uh, the difference should be same in y coordinates as well, but clearly it's not same. So let's try for um, differences, right? Because if you remember, uh, uh, that's how we find the uh, the values of uh, the first difference and the second difference and eventually third difference if required and we stop wherever the differences are start getting equal so i'm just going to write the functional value which are these okay uh let's find the difference this difference is i believe negative 2 because negative 12 minus minus of 10 is negative 2 this difference is negative 4, this difference is, I think, 16, and this difference is 42 minus 8 is, I think, 34. Let's find the second difference. The so second difference is a negative 2 over here. This is, I believe, 20, and this is, I believe, 18. And over here, this difference is 22, and this difference is... Uh, uh, I think I made a mistake here. Negative 8 minus minus 12 should be plus 4, right? Da -da -da. Moving uh, back, correcting this. Apologies for this. This is 4. I think this is 16. And this is, this is what? 34, right? Okay. All right. 4 minus minus 2 is 6. 16 minus 4 is 12. Uh, 34 minus 16 as I believe 18 and now the first difference is not same second difference is not same but look at the third difference it is actually same although we don't really have more numbers to verify but given the data which we have uh, since they are asking about the most suitable function given this data I would say that it's a cubic function why because the first had the first difference was same we could have we would have said linear had the second difference was same we would have said quadratic and since the third difference is same we will say it's a cubic function although cubic is not an option but we know that cubic is a type of polynomial so this is a polynomial function and actually we have already in a way answered part two because they are pro they are asking us to provide justification for your selection based on the observed trends in the table and the char characteristic features of the potential uh, function types so indeed we have you know shown the characteristic of the function that since the second first difference second difference third difference is same that's why this is potentially a cubic function I hope this makes sense. Uh, if there are any questions, please post it down in the comment section and I will see you in another video. Bye-bye.